With the introduction of Max for Live, Ableton has opened up new avenues of possibility by putting the heart of Cycling 74's Max MSP directly into Live 8. Now, you can make and use devices which are like plugins, but with fewer pesky limitations. One such device is a free download from puremagnetic.com called Spectral Mixer, which I would like to show you. Once you've downloaded and installed the Spectral Mixer Teaser Live Pack, you can find Spectral Mixer in the Live Device Browser under Audio Effects, Max Audio Effect, Pure Magnetic, Spectral Mixer Teaser. Spectral Mixer is an audio processor that separates the quiet, mid, and loud portions of the incoming signal and then allows us to adjust the volume of each band separately. It achieves this by analyzing the loudness of the signal's different frequency areas and then letting us set two levels, an upper threshold, above which the loud portion begins, and a lower threshold, below which is the quiet portion. The mid portion comprises any signal falling between these two thresholds. The thresholds have their own numeric controls on the far left of the device. The main display of the device serves two purposes. First, it shows the spectrum of the incoming signal, plotting frequency from low to high along the x-axis and amplitude along the y-axis. Behind the signal, the quiet, mid, and loud regions are colored to give a visual reference to these sonic parameters. Second, the display serves as a controller as well. Clicking on the display sets both thresholds to similar values. Holding and dragging the mouse adjusts the upper threshold if you drag above the initial click, and the lower threshold if you drag below. Holding the shift key before you click will adjust the nearest threshold instead of initially resetting both. Additionally, if you hold the Command key on Mac or Control key on PC before you click, this will grab both thresholds and move them uniformly as you drag, generally maintaining the width of the mid portion. Finally, by Option clicking on Mac or Alt clicking on PC, dragging down will bring both thresholds closer together, while dragging up will spread them apart. It's worth mentioning that the sound hasn't changed at all up to this point. That's because we've just been adjusting the boundaries, but haven't yet changed the way those portions are processed. To the right of the spectrum display are enable switches and gain scalers for the quiet, mid, and loud portions of the signal. By disabling both the loud and mid frequencies of the sound, we are now hearing only the quietest part of the sound. We can adjust the threshold to get a good idea of how what we see aligns with what we hear. Now that we have things working, I'll adjust the volume for the quiet area. An easy way to literally turn this track upside down is to make the quiet parts loud and the loud parts quiet, so let's try that. Yeah, there we go. This is a great way to turn a guitar into a banjo or just make any sound unique by emphasizing the parts we rarely hear. Two of the most interesting parameters here are attack and release time. In this context, release sets the amount of time it takes to transition to a lower gain setting. I'll demonstrate this by clicking once to set a very narrow mid region, and then disabling the quiet and loud regions. We now hear only signal within this thin region. By increasing the release time, sound that briefly lands in that small amplitude range now takes longer to fade out as it passes back into the quiet or loud regions. Essentially, any fast moving sound can now be made into a pad. After setting the release time back to its default instantaneous value, I will increase the width of the mid portion to include more of the signal. Like the release time parameter, attack time sets how long it takes to transition to a higher gain setting. By increasing the attack time, we are making our signal wait longer before the higher volume fully kicks in. In this way, we most clearly hear signal that lingers in the mid region for a while.
This is a good way to set a high gain level, but limit the frequency areas that apply the full gain, and thus minimize clipping. It also makes for a more dynamic sound. Sometimes, however, fun settings make clipping unavoidable. On the far right of the device is a master output gain setting, and also a curious button labeled auto gain. While the auto gain button is held down, the peak level leaving the device is determined. When the button is released, the output gain setting is adjusted to give you three decibels of headroom. This makes setting the output level much easier when you like the balance of the regions and want to avoid clipping, but want to keep a strong signal. I hope you found this introduction to Spectral Mixer useful as a way to get new sounds out of Ableton. The first bundle of Max for Live devices from PureMagnetic.com will be available this month and is called Max Fuel the First. One of the 10 devices is a renamed Spectral Mixer, now called Marx because in the end, all he does is redistribute the amplitude. Thanks again, take care.